Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video we're going to be starting a brand new series and we're going to be painting a rooster in watercolor. Now I'm not a great big expert on watercolor but I do like to dabble with it and I think it's really pretty and I'm just learning how to um, put my colors down and uh, how to work backwards because when you do watercolor you sort of work backwards from the way I've been working. I've been working from dark to light. You work from light to dark with watercolor. Now watercolor comes in at least three major forms. It comes in pan watercolors as you can see here these are the little blocks of hardened pigment and you just go ahead and add water to them with your brush and you can go ahead and start painting with them that way or they come in tubes and the tubes are in wet paint form and you can also you just add water to them as well and they also come in watercolor pencils and you use these kind of like a colored pencil and then you go ahead and you add the water after you've got the pigment down on the paper app that I'm going to be using is ArtRage for Android and as you can see you can set it up with different kinds of paper and different kind of um, sizes and also you can add a different kind of color for the background on your paper and one of the things that I like about this app is that it also lets you use a photo reference so you can go ahead and choose a photo reference on your tablet and add that on there and I really like their user interface because it, it's really um, cute it acts like it's you know you've got a reference pinned on the bulletin board and I also like just the the look of the tools as well because they represent sort of the real materials and I just kinda like the overall look of Art Rage and I also like it for Windows as well Windows has more features than the tablet apps. <clears throat> so here I'm just sketching out a rough sketch of the uh, rooster and you might want to do this step if you're doing this traditionally on another piece of paper and then trace it onto your good watercolor paper because if you're doing sort of a rough sketch then you might not want to erase a lot and leave uh, marks on your good watercolor paper and um, if you do sketch it on your good watercolor paper make really light marks because the pencil will leave lines on the paper and that's also hard to cover up so <clears throat> here I'm just kind of getting the general shape of the rooster and I'm using the pencil category in Art Rage for the sketch and also I'm using the uh, eraser category and you can set it to a soft or hard erase and so this is why I was suggesting that if you're doing this traditionally you might want to do it on a another piece of paper first and then just trace it onto your good watercolor paper and I like to use arches paper traditionally um, there's Canson and other different kinds of brands and you can use cold press and hot press cold press watercolor paper is, is rougher than hot press hot press is kind of smooth so it just depends on what kind of a look that you want and so here I'm looking through the watercolor categories and they have several different brushes and you can also uh, tweak them a little bit and sort of um, design them the way you want them to be and I'm using the Harsh Chaos Blender to uh, blend out the watercolor and to kind of give it that um, real diffuse uh, watercolor wash look here and I'm just kind of adding some reds and some blues and a little bit of uh, probably a yellow ochre type of color maybe some reddish browns and we just kind of want to paint around the rooster now of course digitally it doesn't matter you can always go back over it but if you're following along traditionally you have to paint around 
the rooster because watercolor paint is very transparent and you can't really paint over it that well. You can paint over it with gouache and acrylic and I'll show you at the end where you can add a little bit of some white highlights using gouache or acrylic paint. But if you just want to use mostly watercolor then you have to paint around your main subject. And here I'm just adding a little bit of some darker purples and some burnt umber colors around his feet just to kind of give an indication of the ground. We're not going to do a big fancy background. We just kind of want to show the main subject of the rooster and just have kind of a, um, a single subject composition. And so I'm adding a little bit more purple and using the Harsh Chaos Blender to blend it out. And the ground doesn't have to be very detailed or anything. And of course we don't want the background to be detailed. And when you're doing something like this, you can design it for uh, putting on mugs or t-shirts or, or just a nice print for somebody's kitchen. And so here I'm adding a little bit more um, colors into the background and blending them. Being careful not to get it on the rooster. It doesn't matter if you get it a little bit on the rooster because these are such light colors and you'll be able to go over it again with some of the darker colors. And then I wanted to start on the rooster's neck there. And so I wanted to add a sort of a light, really light yellow color, maybe cream white to his neck first and then add a little bit of the darker colors that you see on the top. And I'm using sort of the dry on wet brush in uh, Art Rage. It just um, kind of gives it a little bit more opaqueness. And I'm adding uh, the Harsh Chaos Blender which is sort of the equivalent of adding water if you're following along traditionally. And I'm using the number eight round or a number six round. I don't use a lot of brushes when I'm doing uh, watercolor. I find that the round, a round brush and a flat brush and maybe a small liner brush are about all that I need um, for watercolor. And I'm adding some oranges on the top of his head there and around on the bottom of his neck and above on his wings. And I'm adding some um, red colors, some reddish, some purples there where you can see that his um, feathers get a little bit darker. And in the front where he has a, a sort of a shadow, they're going to be a darker brown color. And here I was just kind of playing around with some of the blenders and seeing if any of them were any better than the Harsh Chaos Blender. But I decided that I like the Harsh Chaos Blender the best. It just sort of um, looks more like natural water. But I was playing around with some of the frost blenders and uh, trying to see what they did a little. And they do give sort of a watercolor-like effect. But I like the other one the best, the Harsh Chaos Blender. And I work usually just with one or two layers. And you have to kind of add a new layer with some of the uh, watercolor brushes to, to make them a little bit more opaque and not blend in quite as much. Here I'm working with some more of the different kinds. The dry on wet seems to work the best for me. And I'm adding the black onto the rooster. And if you're following along traditionally, you can either add a gray or you can just add the black color and dilute it with a lot of water and that will still give you a, a grayish transparent color. And then I wanted to add a little bit of some ultramarine blue on the wings because he has black feathers but the shine that it uh, looks like when the light catches it is kind of a bluish color. So it's a blue black color. So you want to go ahead and just add your blues there before you add any more of the darker colors. And then I wanted to go ahead and just work a little bit more with the orange colors and the feathers that come on his back. They're kind of an orangey red color. So I added a, a little bit of a lighter orange and then gradually darkened it. And because I wanted to add a little bit of 
some uh, yellow ochre or a lighter orange. These color names are going to vary with your brand of watercolor. So, but some of them are, are kind of general colors like yellow ochre and new gamboge yellow and things like that. So you would add some of that onto that wing and then I'm working a little bit more on the edge of it and I'm darkening around the edge of the wing a little bit with the black trying to get a, a little bit of a darker color. But remember in watercolor if you want your highlight don't paint over it. So you have to leave pockets of light around on your um, rooster there on the feathers in the front because you want it to look like uh, highlights shining on the black feathers and so here I'm just kind of smoothing that out a little bit trying to get it a little bit uh, more transparent looking and I'm working a little bit more on the feathers <clears throat> and adding a little bit more of some darker oranges and then I wanted to go ahead and add the highlight on the tail feathers and again the tail feathers are going to be black but the highlight is going to be sort of a bluish iridescent color kind of an aqua color so you want to put that color down first if you're working traditionally and I'm just kind of working with the low blending brush there to see what it will do and if you're following along traditionally your number six round brush will work fine and you want a soft synthetic brush for watercolors and so I just want to go ahead and add this down on the feathers first before I add any of the darker colors so this is the end of part one of my watercolor rooster series and in part two we're going to go ahead and start adding the darker colors and if you want to I'll also show you how to add ink to your painting so stick around if you want to see that part and hit the subscribe button and thanks everybody for watching and thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later.